During a normal afternoon in the city, a young couple is in the process of moving to their new beautiful apartment. They have plenty of boxes of their own to unpack, but they are surprised to discover that the landlord left behind an old funky refrigerator. Gail is not impressed at all but Rob finds it very interesting because this old model has the motor above instead of underneath like modern models. He explains that hot air rises so it does not make sense to put the motor underneath the refrigerator because it allows the hot air to go up in the machine, but Gail does not care and just agrees to whatever he says to humor him. Afterward, Gail takes out a bottle of wine to share with her husband, and Rob excitedly opens the fridge to get ice. He discovers that the freezer is full of old disgusting frost and compares it to Superman's Fortress of Solitude. After pulling with all his strength, he manages to barely get just a little ice cube out of it. Then the couple shares a toast to their new life together, but before Rob can take a sip of his drink, he notices there is something weird inside the ice. He grabs it to look at it more closely and asks Gail if he is seeing things, but Gail confirms she is seeing something too. To be sure, she grabs a magnifying glass for a better inspection and confirms that inside the cube there is a miniature mammoth with various spears piercing its body. Wondering if there are more things like this, Gail opens the freezer again and quickly takes out all the things left by the landlord, only to be shocked by what she finds. Rob soon joins her and confirms that apparently they have a tiny lost civilization living in their refrigerator. Right there on the ice, there is a whole medieval city with tiny little people living their daily lives and not noticing the two giants that keep watching them as if they were a movie. These little people also move incredibly fast as they continue to build their city and work hard to achieve progress. Gail points out that this does not make any sense, explaining that this is an early medieval city but woolly mammoths died thousands of years before the medieval ages. Rob does not understand much about history so he just agrees to humor her. Afterward, Rob decides to bury the little frozen mammoth in a pot of dirt. It seems this has made him very sad, so Gail tries to cheer him up by saying the tiny animal will be good fertilizer, but Rob thinks it is too soon for jokes. Soon curiosity gets the better of them and the couple checks the freezer again, only to be shocked by what they find next, the tiny civilization has evolved at a drastic speed and it is now going through the industrial revolution, which includes all kinds of buildings like factories and roads getting built all over the ice and filling the freezer with smoke. Since the couple had only been gone for 10 minutes but decades passed for their little people, Gail reaches the conclusion time moves faster inside the freezer, and Rob is disappointed when he realizes they have missed the renaissance period. As Rob watches two little men sitting next to a building under construction, he finds himself wondering if the tiny people see him and Gail as gods. However, the two little men are actually making fun of the couple. They find their giant faces hilarious and are annoyed by the broccoli stuck in Gail's teeth because they have been looking at it all day. It takes only a few seconds for the little civilization to start changing again, and now modernized buildings are being built at great speed. Rob notices things flying around, and Gail realizes they are airplanes. She also notices the new skyscrapers, making her reach the conclusion that the little civilization has reached the present time. Rob agrees when he notices a Starbucks store, confirming this brand truly shows up everywhere. Then Rob notices something strange and comes closer for a better look. At that moment, a missile falls in the middle of the city and explodes, blinding Rob and making him back away until he falls to the floor. While screaming can be heard coming from the freezer, Gail rushes to Rob's side to help him calm down but Rob continues to panic as he points out actual nukes are blowing up in their freezer. However Gail cannot take him seriously because Rob looks like a huge tomato and it makes her laugh, so she hands him a toaster for him to see how ridiculous he looks. Inside the freezer, huge nuclear bombs continue to explode. Rob notices things are getting worse yet the couple can only stare as the little civilization is taken over by violence, screams, and more explosions. Feeling frustrated, Gail closes the freezer, pointing out that people cannot just outgrow war in a couple of minutes. Rob wonders what they should do, and Gail simply says they should get pizza. Later in the evening, the couple enjoys their pizza for dinner while trying to wait patiently, but eventually Rob cannot take it anymore and says they should open the freezer again. Gail reminds him that they need to accept the possibility the civilization did not make it, but Rob goes to open the freezer anyway. Surprisingly, the little civilization has become a futuristic city full of bright lights and flying cars that remind Gail of Emerald City from The Wizard of Oz. Rob is in awe at how beautiful and advanced everything is, and at that moment, a building emerges right in front of them, which reminds Rob of an adult toy. A huge pyramid-like structure also pops up in the middle of the tiny city, growing tall as bridges connect all around it to get energy from other buildings. However the structure suddenly transforms into a diamond-shaped fortification that glows so brightly that it has to consume the whole city until it explodes. The resulting glow looks like a star and ejects beautiful dashes of light that begin to fly around the couple's kitchen, lighting up every corner as Rob and Gail watch with fascination and big smiles. Their theory is that little people may have discovered how to travel through space and time. Afterward, the lights return to the freezer and gather into a sphere before outright disappearing. 
Rob and Gail go from smiling to looking quite sad and confused, and when Rob wonders if the little people will ever return, Gail says it is unlikely. Feeling the need to grieve, Rob pulls the refrigerator's plug as a way to move on and accept the little people are gone. Gail gives him a hug to comfort him before closing the freezer, deciding they are done for today. The next morning, Rob makes coffee and shares it with Gail. Although they do not say a word, it is quite obvious they cannot stop thinking about the tiny civilization in the freezer, so they give in and try opening it again. To their shock, they discover there is a cold mist coming out of it even if it is still unplugged. An even bigger shock is that inside the freezer there is a new ice age going on, showing primitive homo sapiens eating the huge bodies of ancient creatures. It seems the little civilization has not disappeared, instead it was reset and has started from zero. At that moment, a Tyrannosaurus rex roars loudly and begins chasing after the primitive men, catching one in the air with its huge mouth before going after the one that just fell to the ground. Now where could this civilization possibly have come from? It turns out that after finishing his creation, God is now a pretty bored old man. He sits in his fancy office all day and admires the small version of earth he is on his table, where primitive people are living among large animals and plants. God is in the middle of a book when his butler Jeffrey asks him about it, so God explains he is happy because he has found a recipe for a black hole. At that moment, God notices that people on his tiny earth are advancing pretty quickly, and at first he finds it quite amusing. However when the primitive men discover how to make fire by rubbing some sticks and rocks, God gets angry because he should be the one to give them such a power. He wonders what period it is on earth, and Jeffrey explains that they should still be 200,000 years away from getting fire according to plan. Furious, God orders Jeffrey to put out the fire, and Jeffrey immediately blows at the tiny people on the table. From the little guy's point of view, this is a very powerful wind and they quickly lose the fire, which makes them feel helpless. God feels satisfied and goes back to his book while complaining about how much humans annoy him. Then God orders Jeffrey to drive the little people into a cave, so Jeffrey swipes his hand over the small earth's ground, which scares the elephants. These huge animals begin running around and frighten the humans, who also run to hide in a cave as God points out that it would be good to shrink their brains. Soon the tiny people come out again to start a ritual dance that should bring rain. God curses them, not understanding why humans are unhappy now. Jeffrey explains that they forgot to turn off the drought on earth, so God sighs and lets Jeffrey give them some water. Jeffrey is surprised that God is being merciful for a change, then he proceeds to throw some water on the small earth with his spray bottle. The little people raise their hands to celebrate the rain, but God can only laugh at their reaction. Next, God asks Jeffrey to spray the humans again and again so he can keep laughing at their weird behavior. Once he is satisfied, God returns to his book while ordering Jeffrey to release a plague. Shocked by this sudden change in God's mood, Jeffrey picks up an antique box to retrieve a very creepy looking vial. After looking at God for confirmation, Jeffrey pours a plague from the vial, and the tiny people immediately begin to feel incredibly sick and die. God admires the horrors he has caused with a blank face, then he simply returns to his book. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.